Hello. Um, something quick and brief about math that I got to discover through a conversation with a friend this week. So I was thinking about regular operations again, like, you know, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, you know, exponentiation, logarithms. And, you know, just the feeling that you get where it's like, oh, addition is easy. Subtraction, it's like, okay, that's a little bit harder. Then it's like multiplication, okay, a little bit harder than addition, but, you know, I can do this. Division, it's like, whoa, whoa, like in my head, what are you talking about? Like, you want me to do division in my head? Like, there's all these decimals, like, that's hard. And then it's like exponentiation, it's like, okay, that's a bit harder than multiplication. I'm like, but I can do it. But logarithms? What? I don't even remember them off the top of my head, let alone do them in my head. And it's like, why is it that the inverse operation seems like harder? Like, you know, because we call subtraction the inverse of addition. We think of division as the inverse of multiplication. We think of logarithm as the inverse of exponentiation. And last week I was thinking about how, you know, everything stems from addition and subtraction because, you know, multiplication is just repeated addition, exponentiation is repeated multiplication, which is repeat which is repeated addition, and then for subtraction, division is repeated subtraction, logarithm is repeated division, which is divi which is repeated subtraction. Cool. Right. So I'm like, okay, well, everything stems from addition and subtraction. Um, but, you know, someone, what was they talking about? Why did I say that? Anyway, everything stems from addition and subtraction. But then maybe, maybe, actually everything stems just from addition. And by everything, I don't mean like everything. But hear me out. So, the first time that it seemed to make sense why subtraction might be harder than addition was in the following, you know, thought experiment. Like, 2 plus 3 is the same thing as 3 plus 2. However, when we get to subtraction, you know, 2 minus 3 is not the same thing as 3 minus 2. So it's like, is there just less symmetry? in the inverse operation because same thing, multiplication, right? Two times three is the same thing as three times two, but two divided by three is not the same thing as three divided by two. And it's like, wait, maybe that's just it. Like maybe that's just why it's harder or it feels harder. And then, then, I was like, how is this possible? How is this possible that there's more symmetry with one operation than its inverse operation? It's like, it's not, like, is it really a different operation that you're doing subtraction than addition? Like, why, like, why, how is it? How is, like, what is this that, that there seems to be more symmetry in addition than subtraction, in multiplication than division, in exponentiation than logarithms? Like, how? But then, back to addition and subtraction, just those two. Then I was like, wait a minute. It's not, we're thinking about this wrong. So, in addition, Great, 2 plus 3 is equal to 3 plus 2. And we can agree that 2 minus 3 is not the same thing as 3 minus 2. But we're forgetting to treat negative numbers as separate numbers. Like, if we treat negative 2 as a different number than positive 2, because 
it is a different number. We think of it of like, oh, it's the same, it's just negative. But like, but what if it's actually a different number, like a completely different number, right? Then subtraction actually has the same symmetries as addition. Because for subtraction, when we're doing two minus three, we're doing two plus negative three. And when we're doing three minus two, we're doing three plus negative two. So the negative is different because that's why three minus two doesn't equal to two minus three. Because in three minus two, the two is negative. So like three minus two is the same thing as three plus negative two, which is the same thing as negative two plus three. So that symmetry does exist. Even though we're using the addition symbol. And so then it's like, wait, does this actually count as a symmetry of subtraction? Because what you're doing is you're actually adding, right? You're taking negative two plus three, or you're taking three plus negative two. But then it's, but then it, it clicks. It's like, wait a minute. So then all of the operations and all those, you know, that we, that all the operations that we use specifically with like numbers, with our number system, you know, that's, they stem from addition. Or at least all of these that I just listed. Like, there's lots of operations. There's lots of other ones. Um, but the point is, it all stems from addition. Because we, we think of subtraction as the inverse of addition. But what if none of these other things exist? What if subtraction doesn't exist? Multiplication doesn't exist? Like, division doesn't exist? What if just addition exists? And we're just... doing different things to addition to get all these other things, to get like subtraction, to get multiplication. Like when we talked about the multiplication, you know, repeated addition, that stuff. But subtraction is just addition specifically in the case where you're using the negative numbers. So then division, which is repeated subtraction, is just the case of repeatedly adding negative numbers. So it's kind of like <sighs> repeatedly adding negative numbers. Or, okay, just, okay, subtraction is adding a negative number. So the inverse The whole thing rests upon negative numbers being equivalent but opposite to positive numbers. That's how we've defined it. Like we've, we, we think of it on like a linear scale, right? We think of the positive numbers and we think of the negative numbers. Um, you know, and it's like zero is like the symmetry line of like, we have all the positives, we have all the negatives, we have the same amount of each one. Um, we're just defining them as the opposite. We're defining them as the inverse. But then so subtraction is not real. The minus, it's not real, it's just the addition of an opposite but equal quantity. Maybe not necessarily equal, but like opposite quantity of an inverse. It's the addition of an inverse quantity. Like I've never, I've never thought about it this way. And I don't know. So then that still doesn't really answer my question of like, well, so then the symmetries do exist between subtraction and addition. It's not just an addition. It is in subtraction as well. 
because subtraction is just addition. So the symmetries are there in terms of like, you know, the negative 2 plus 3, 3 plus negative 2 type equals, you know, those equal if you flip them. Um, it's just, but so then why does it feel harder? Why does subtraction feel harder than addition? Is it just that we spend more time learning addition first? Or is it somehow easier to expand than it is to contract? And why does it seem to get, you know, exponentially harder? Like, multiplication is, is only, like, linearly harder than addition. And, like, exponentiation is only, like, linearly harder for me. I am talking from personal experience, if, just by the way, for me. Um, like, exponentiation is, like, linearly harder than um, multiplication. But then with division... And subtract and division and logarithms, like you know, like division for me is exponentially harder than subtraction, and logarithms are exponentially harder for me than division. You know, like, like is there like a reason behind that? Is it like? Is the the question that I'm wondering is is there a reason behind it that's a reason larger than oh I just studied one thing more than the other like is there something inherent about the operation itself the name that we give it or its properties that make it harder and so hold on can I do the same thing with division as I did with like division and multiplication as I did with addition and subtraction because I took subtraction and I defined it as addition with the inverses. So like, okay, but we still have multi um, division, right? Where two divided by three is not the same thing as three divided by two. Here we're not using negatives. Mm. No, I don't get it. It's so much harder for my mind to conceptualize. Like division, we're taking something whole and we're dividing it. And... Does, is there a way to make the same symmetries appear from it? Like one divided, okay, so let's think about it this way. Let's add the ones, right? So we know that like two divided by three is the same thing as one over three. Ooh, 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 I got it, I got it, I got it. Is the same thing as one over three times two over one. So we're multiplying 1 over 3 two times versus when we do 3 over 2, we're, we're doing 1 over 2 times 3 over 1. So we're multiplying 1. Wait a minute. We're multiplying. Oh, my gosh. Wait, I get it. This makes it so much easier. Oh my gosh, if someone just told me 3 over 2, I, I would think about it for a moment. But if you're telling me we're multiplying 1 over 2 three times, it's easy. You just, uh, you know, it's, wow, because like 1 over, whoa, whoa, we're multiplying 1 over 2 three times. Because like 2 times, you just get 2 over 2, which is 1, and then another 1 over, wait, we're adding? Multiplying it by 3 is the same thing as adding it 3 times. So we have 1 over 2 plus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 2, which is very easy because then it's just 1.5. Um, whoa. 
Hold on, so then 2 over 3 is just we're multiplying 1 third 2 times, so then that makes sense because 1 third is very easy because that's just like 0 0.33333. If you just multiply that by 2, you get 0 0.6666, whatever, like, whoa, 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 wow. So let me try something harder. So then if I do, well then that, ugh, this slightly depends on knowing something, like, like, 1 divided by 7? Like, what? Is what? I don't... Well, we, we take, like, the uh, long division. So, there's a 10. You subtract the 7. You get a 3. You, well, you get 0 point, And you get a 3. And so, then 10 minus 7 is 3. We have to add a 0. 0 0.35? Because 7... No, 6 times 5 is 30, not 7 times 5. So then 7 times... Four is 28, right? And so then 30 minus 28 is 3... Wait, what? <laughs> no, it's 2. So then we have 0 0.3 and then 2. Anyway, 0 0.32, right? It's 2, and then you put the 20. 0 0.32, not 2. F wait, why did, why did I say 2? It's 4. 0 0.34. That gives us the 2, which gives us the 14, 0 0.342. Anyway, something like that. So if 1 over 7 is 0 0.342, if, let's, let's pretend I know that, then 5 over 7 is 0 0.342 five times, so then it's the same thing as multiplying, like 34-ish kind of times 5. I don't know. Ugh, this made sense for a second. It made It still makes more sense. And it did before, but like, you know, like 1 over 4 is like 25. So if you give me like 7 over 4, you know, if you just give me 7 over 4, I'm just going to be like, bro, I don't know. Like, what? I don't, I don't know. But then if, but if I think of, you know, adding 1 over 4 7 times, well, then I know that adding 1 over 4 8 times is going to give me 2. So then I just subtract 0 0.25, and so then I just get, like, 1.75, right? Like, that's faster than I could have done if I didn't think about what I'm thinking about right now. So that's cool. Um, but I definitely thought I got it more than I actually got it, but I still got it better. Um, yeah, anyway. That's all I got for right now because <laughs> I need to go to sleep. But really wanted to remember this. So I had to talk about it. And maybe I'll figure out some more things about it later. But yeah, thanks for joining. I do have my tea over there. It is still cooling down. So I will probably drink it in the morning. Anyway, adios.